In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can use Inkscape to create this elegant style logo design. And if you want to follow along with what I'm doing in this lesson, I will have a link in the description of the video to where you can download the fonts that I used here. And I'll also include a download link to the file itself in case you want to skip the tutorial and just use this design. So I'll come over here into a new document and we will get started. The first thing I'm going to do is grab my pen tool, which is located over here in the toolbar, or you can access it by pressing the letter B on your keyboard. I'm going to come up here to the settings and I'm going to make sure I have the spiral path option enabled. And then I'm going to hold the control key and click once on the canvas to draw a line and bring this line straight up. And while still holding control, click again, and then we can let go of control and bring the line out here and then click again. And now I can continue drawing this curve until it spirals to the inside like that. Once you're happy with the placement, you can press the Enter key to place it. And if you're not entirely happy with how it looks, you can come over here to the Edit Paths by Nodes, Edit Paths by Nodes tool and zoom in on this and just adjust these nodes a little bit. Now, since this is a spiro path, it will be a little hard to control, but that's to ensure that it remains fluid and smooth. So I'm gonna adjust this a little bit until I'm happy with how it looks. And I think that looks pretty good right there. What I'm looking for mainly is I wanna make sure there's an equal amount of space going through here. I don't want too much space on one side. I want it to look fairly even. So now that that's set, I'm gonna zoom out. I'm gonna take this node right here, click on it to select it. Let me zoom down a little bit. I'm gonna select this node right here, and then I'm gonna hold the control key and just click and drag that node up like that. I wanna shorten that a little bit because now I'm gonna grab the selection tool and I'm gonna right click this and go to duplicate and I'm going to flip it vertically and horizontally, and I'm gonna bring this down here on this side. Now to snap these together, I'm gonna come up here and click on this magnet icon to enable snapping, and I just wanna make sure I have these simple controls in place. I want these two options highlighted, and now I can zoom in on this and snap this onto the line. I'll bring that up a little bit. I'm just eyeballing this here, and that looks pretty good as it is. Now I'm gonna create another one for this side. So let me right click this and go to duplicate again. And I'm gonna take this one, I'm going to flip it vertically, and I'm gonna hold my control key and scale this one down a little bit. Now before I do that, let me undo what I just did right there. Before you scale that down, make sure you have this setting disabled, this option here that says, when scaling objects, scale the stroke width by the same proportion. We want that turned off for this tutorial. So make sure that's disabled, and then scale this down so that it maintains the same stroke width. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna place this one, I'm gonna snap it right over here, right about there. I may make this one a little bigger. I don't like how small that one is. I'll make that a little bigger and I'll bring that down here. So now that that's in place, let me click off of it to deselect everything. And I'm gonna go back to my pen tool and I'm gonna draw another little line coming off of the center of this line here. So let me snap to the line, hold control, bring the line straight up, click again and then bring this one out here, right about there, press enter, and there you go. That's about what I'm looking for. And again, if you're not happy with the placement, you could just grab the nodes tool and adjust it until it looks good. I'm gonna take this and bring this down a little bit. I'm gonna hold control while I do this so that it snaps, or so that it locks it onto the vertical axis. And let me right click this and duplicate it. And I'm gonna flip this vertically and horizontally and bring this down here so that we have another piece down here going the opposite way. And that right there is what we're looking for. So what I'll do next is I'm gonna draw another line coming out of the top right here. I'm gonna grab my pen tool again. I'm gonna to snap to this intersecting area and then just click and drag or just click a couple of times rather to draw a line sort of like that and press enter. It's not gonna look good at first, but that's okay because we're gonna to go to the edit pads by nodes tool and adjust this until it looks right. So I'm gonna move this. You gotta be careful of the snapping here. There we go and maybe I'll adjust that a little bit. Okay, that looks good as it is. Okay, so let me zoom out now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my selection tool. I wanna select all of these pieces and I wanna convert them from spiral paths to just regular paths. So I'll come up here to path and I will select object to path. And now I'm gonna group them together by going to object group. And now I'm gonna click on it to get the rotation handles. And I wanna rotate this around clockwise until it's sitting flat like this. And what I'm looking for is the bottom of this side and the bottom of this side. I wanna make sure they're both sitting flat on the bounding box of the selection while I rotate it. So let me just make sure, um, let me just make sure everything's even. That looks pretty good as it is. 
And now I can zoom out. And now we're going to ungroup this. So let's come up here to object and go to ungroup. And then open up the fill and stroke menu. And I'll do that just by double clicking this black stripe down here. And that'll open up the fill and stroke menu. I want to come over here to the stroke style tab. And I want to increase the width. So I'm going to click on this plus icon and hold that click to make this, to make those lines thicker. And I want to give them rounded caps. And now I'm going to click off of it to deselect everything. I'm going to add little circles at the ends of these uh, lines here to show you what I mean in this design over here. I have these little circles on these ends. So let me show you how you can do that. I'm going to select this object right here first. And I'll come over here to the markers in the stroke style tab. I'm going to come over here to where it says markers and I want to add an ends marker. I'm going to click on this drop down and I'm going to choose this round option. But when you do that, it's going to be a little too big. So I'm going to bring that down in size a little bit. I'm going to manually type in the default size is one. I'm going to bring this down to about 0.5 and see how that looks. OK, that's a good proportion right there. So I'll leave that as it is. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to apply that to this object as well. I'm going to apply that same marker. Now, now that you applied the first marker, you should have it up here in your recently used markers. And you can just select it. And you won't have to resize this one. It'll inherit the size of the previous one. And I'll apply that to this part as well. Let me come up here and choose uh, the same marker. And now I'm just going to put, just as like a decorative element, I'm going to put three little circles in there. So let me come back in here and add those three little circles. Let me grab my circles and ellipses tool. I'm going to turn off snapping right now. That's just going to get in the way. And I'll hold control and click and drag to draw a perfectly round circle. Go back to my selection tool. And I will make this a little bigger. Actually, no, I'll leave that as it is. I'll right click it, go to duplicate, and I'll make this one a little bigger. And then I'll create one more. Right click, duplicate, and I'll make this one even bigger. Holding control while I do this to lock the aspect ratio. There we go. Now I'm going to zoom out. OK, that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select all of this. Well, first of all, let me click on one of these and find out what exactly this stroke weight is. So for mine, the stroke weight is 6. So whatever your number is, keep that in mind. We're going to use that in just a minute. Let me select all of this. Go to Object, Group, and now I'm going to create a circle. So I'm going to grab my Circles and Ellipses tool, click and drag while holding Control to create a perfectly round circle. And I want to give this the same properties that this, these objects have. So I'm going to remove the fill by clicking the red X, and I'm going to hold Shift and click on the color black to apply a stroke. And it looks like it inherited that stroke width already, so I don't have to manually type that in. If this were any other number than 6, I'd have to type that in and press Enter, but it looks like I'm good to go. So let me take this and move this over. I'm going to scale this down accordingly. I'll bring it down maybe that much. And I want to make sure that this is sitting on the same horizontal plane that this object is. So let me select this object, hold Shift, select this object, and then open up the Align and Distribute menu by going to Object and Align and Distribute. And I'm going to choose Last Selected from the Relative To dropdown. And I want to choose this option down here that says Align Bottom Edges. And that's going to put both of those on the same horizontal plane. And I'm going to click off of that to deselect it. And then I'll take this one and just move this in a little bit. And I'm holding control while I click and drag so that I lock it onto that horizontal plane and I don't lose that alignment that I just made. OK, so let me take this object now, right click it, go to duplicate. I'm going to flip this one horizontally, hold control and move this one over here just like that. And now I'm going to select both of these. I'm holding shift while I click on each of them to select them both. And I want to group them together. We'll go to object group. And I want to center it on this circle just to make sure that everything is perfectly symmetrical. I'll select the uh, center on vertical axis. There we go. And now I can ungroup everything. So I'll go to object and select ungroup. And now I'm going to put another circle in the center here. So let me take this circle, right click it, go to duplicate. Hold Control and Shift and scale this down about that much. And in here, you can put whatever you want, whether it be a letter or an icon or any other graphical depiction. For my demonstration, I used the Inkscape logo. I figured it makes sense since this is an Inkscape tutorial. But you could put whatever you want in there. I'm just going to leave it blank for now. And now I'm going to put some lines underneath it here. If you notice, I had some lines going underneath these elements. So let me come back in here. I'm going to grab my pen tool again. Let me choose the regular pen mode. And then I'll come out here, click to add a point, hold control, bring the line straight across, 
right towards the end of the other side, click again, and now we can let go of control and press enter to have that line made. And I wanna make that stroke the same size. Let me grab my selection tool. I'll come back over here to the fill and stroke menu, the stroke style tab, I'll change this to six. I want this to have rounded caps and I'm gonna put those markers on the ends of these. So let me use this drop down and select those markers for the first and the last, the start and the end point of that path. And it now has those markers. So let me make another copy of this now. I'm gonna right click it and go to duplicate, hold control and bring this one down here about that much. Now the amount of spacing between these two lines, I'm gonna use these circles as a reference. I want the spacing between these two lines to be about equal to the spacing between these two circles. So I'm just gonna eyeball that and use my own judgment. It just gives the design an overall more balanced and symmetrical look. And once that's in place, I'm gonna hold Control and Shift and I'm just gonna scale this down a little bit. I want this line to be a little shorter than the other line. And that right there is what we're going for. So now we're going to add our text. Let me grab the text tool. Click, and for this demonstration, I'm just gonna write elegant. Grab my selection tool, and I'm gonna open up the text editor, which can be accessed by uh, going to, you can use this icon down here in the bottom right of the screen, this letter T, click on that. And now we have our text editor. So let me find the font that I'm using. It's called Britannic. There we go, I'll click apply. And I'm just gonna scale this up to make it an appropriate size for the logo. Maybe I'll scale this down a little bit. And again, we're always holding control when we scale so that it locks the aspect ratio. If you let go of control, you get a lot of distortion, which you don't want. And now I'm just gonna write logo in a different font next to it. So let me go back over here to my text tool, click again, and I'm just gonna use all caps logo. And the font for this one is Montserrat. Montserrat Medium. And again, I'll have the links to these fonts where you can download them and install them in the description of the video. These are free fonts, so you should be able to use them without a problem. Let me move this in here. Scale it up so it's about the same size. And I wanna decrease the, the spacing between these letters. So let me come back in here to my text tool. I'm gonna to place the cursor between these two letters and I'm gonna hold my Alt key, or if you're on Mac, it would be the Option key, and then use the left arrow just to bring that in. And I'll do the same thing over here. I'll move the cursor over here holding my Option key or Alt key and just using the arrows to bring those letters closer together. Now I'm gonna grab my Selection tool, select both of these, and I'm just gonna scale this up so that it fits the logo more nicely. And at this point, the problem we have now is that the design doesn't look very consistent. The lines of the ornaments here are much thinner than the lines of the letters. Uh, an easy little trick to fix that, you could just select everything Hold your control key and scale it down a little bit. And as you scale it down, the strokes will remain the same weight, but they will just look bigger because they're being sized smaller. And I'll just bring this down until it looks pretty consistent with the weight of the letters. And that's really the secret here to making this design look good. You want all of the lines to be a consistent weight so that it has a uniform look. Okay, that looks good as it is. Let me, uh, let me update the spacing now a little bit. I'm gonna move this down I'm gonna move this line, let me deselect that. I'm gonna move this line down a little bit. And now I'm gonna adjust the spacing in here to accommodate the spacing change that I made there. Let me scale that down a little bit. I'm holding Control and Shift while I scale this inward so that I don't lose the orientation with the circle above it. And there we go, that should do it for this tutorial. That is how you can create these decorative elements to make an elegant style logo using Inkscape. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.